Hello my friends and welcome back. Here is the space hockey game that I took so much time to make the other day. It's a two-player air hockey game. I had no idea what I was doing at the beginning, but by the end I had a fully functioning game. You can watch the whole long live stream if that's your thing, but I figure most people don't want to. So I'm going to break it down into easy steps so you guys can build your very own air hockey game or a number of other sports games using some of the mechanics in here. I'm going to break it down into seven simple steps and you'll be able to know what you're doing by the end of this. All right, let's get into it. Here we have the entirety of the code, so it's definitely not too crazy to build this entire thing. And we're going to break it down into the little elements so you can see each one. First things first, we're gonna need a world to work in. And I was thinking kind of a spacey theme. Now in the world settings, you're gonna wanna go and make this neon appearance as well as use grass before applying your texture. Then when you apply your texture, it's gonna come out looking smooth, unlike the tile textures. Perfect, I made this by just using a black background with a few color dots. Let's put it in here and see what happens. All right, we have a world to work in. Now we're gonna need some characters. Our characters in air hockey are of course the paddles. The main guy is gonna be the moving cylinder, which will be a big one. I made him 0.5 by 0.1 by 0.5. It's gonna be solid and visible, of course. And I use the material zero gravity. The connection point for this one will be its own Y minus and the target Y plus. The target goes on top of it. So we're going to put on top of it this smaller cylinder. This one's 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And this one goes opposite connection, of course. And it's just a normal cylinder, not a moving spear or cylinder. Once you have that, you can just take it and copy it for the other one, then change the colors to whatever you like. I have light blue and pink. Once you have that all set up, you can go ahead and call up your game screen and make it just like this. And it should look like this so far. So now we're actually able to have two different characters and we're gonna hook them up to the sticks for movement. I almost forgot to mention, make sure you've inverted where you are so we're looking down on the screen by using this button. You should have the Z up top and the X on the right. That means that your left and right movement is going to hook into the X port on the moving object and your up and down movement is gonna hook into the Z port. If you got it correctly, then go ahead and test it out and it should work perfectly. Now that we've got the paddles, we need to have a puck to play with. For the puck, all you need to do is call in a simple cylinder. Just make sure it's movable, solid, visible, and destructible. We need this so it can score a goal. Also, the material should be slippery so that we have that ice hockey kind of feel that you get with air hockey as well. You can make the color whatever you want. And if you have it set up this way, also, I would suggest 0 0.4, 0 0.1, and 0 0.4 for the sizes. It'll be important to have a nice size like that so we can score goals later. Let's take a look at what's going on now. We should be able to hit the puck like that. Of course, now it's off the screen, and we're going to need some boundaries. Now, for the boundaries, you can definitely just use six square boxes. Two big ones on the side, and then two on each side here. Leave some room for your goal, which we're going to make in a minute. But I'm doing something special writing on these individual boxes, since I don't like the look of the text. So I made a bunch of little ones. You can also do this if you'd like to write a title. We have one more big problem. Look at this. We can go on the other person's side. That's considered cheating, especially in air hockey, when you can do that. Although it still could be pretty fun this way, I want to make it a little more like traditional air hockey, so we're going to need some more boundaries. They say that good fences make good neighbors, so make sure you make a good fence here. And you're going to make it as thin as possible. You don't want it to take up too much space. Then you're going to turn off the visible, but keep on the solid properties. And everything else should be fine as long as it's not movable. You got yourself a nice invisible box that'll stop them from going to each side. Now it's more fair. An optional but highly recommended idea also is to put this box here, an invisible box, on top of your setup. So measure the height of your setup and add as much as you need to not interfere with your characters. And then you're going to turn the box invisible and immovable. This is going to work as a glass top that keeps your characters from flying off or even tipping over. We're going to copy this box and put it on the other side as well. Getting the height right for this one is going to be the most important thing. And the players won't be able to see it, but it'll make a big difference in your gameplay, especially after we speed these guys up. For the goals, you're going to want to make a black box, just visible, solid, and black. Then you're going to want to levitate it a little bit, so make the position 0.7. 
that it's resting at so that it's actually floating a little bit in the air. We're going to go ahead and copy this and put the black box on the other side for the goal as well. You want to make the goal high enough so that the puck can go in the goal, but not the characters. There we go. That's why the cylinder on top definitely helps as well. Now we have it working, but the puck is just going too far. It's going to have to stop sometime. So let's grab a box that is touching the ground and we're going to clone it and put it back behind this box that the puck goes underneath for both sides. Now you want to go into the box's settings that you just created and make it destructive so that whenever the puck comes in, it will be destroyed. Also go to your puck and you're going to make this one destructible if you forgot to do it in the first place. Now whenever we push the puck into the goal, it gets destroyed, which is what we need. These are moving way too slow. It's time to do some programming and upgrade this game. Before we head into programming, note it's an optional step, but also a good idea to put some slanted boxes in the corners of your setup. This will make sure that the puck does not get stuck in one of the corners and it will definitely make people happier. It also looks pretty cool. All right, now it's time to make our characters much faster. So to do this, we're gonna need to grab some constant nodons and we're gonna go ahead and set this constant to maybe about three right now, I think is a good number. Make four of those and put them next to each of your stick nodons. Now we're gonna need to grab some calculate nodons, multiply. We're gonna end up multiplying the speed here. Next, we're going to plug these ones into the calculate. One's going into the input one, the other into input two, and then we're going to hook it back into the original position here. Make sure you have it moving the right way, and it should look like this for both of them, moving a lot faster. The right is the old speed, and the left is the new speed. Let's do the same for the other person. Another optional feature, but still a really good one, is we're going to make a boost button for each of the characters as well. So let's go over to the button press and let's make it the ZL for this guy on the left. And we're going to make it ZR for the guy on the right. Now, by holding this button, they're going to be able to boost. So we're going to need two more calculate nodons. And we'll put them right here for these guys. Now, be very careful with which ones you connect here. You're going to want to connect the one from your first calculate node on into one of the inputs and then your button into the other input and then what comes out you're going to want to put into the same place as the one that came in so this one's going to the y position just make sure you don't get it messed up so if you need to move it out a little bit to see where it's going definitely highly recommended next we're going to do the same for the up and down motion on this stick so we're going to connect the button into one of the inputs and then the calculator result into the other one. Make sure it's going to the same as the up down is before, which should be the Z axis. If you do it right, then your character should have the boost when you hold ZL. No boost, boost. And it just makes it that much more fun. Do the same thing for the other one. Also, make sure you don't have your stick directly connected like I had there. That would not be good. All right, we'll put this one up here. Now both of your characters should be moving at three times normal speed, and then you can use the boost button to give them a little bit more juice even. So next we want to be able to score a goal and have the game know when that happens. So we're going to need a touch sensor. Head into objects and the sensor. Grab the touch sensor and we're going to make it really thin. We're going to put it over here. Make it as thin as possible underneath this box. So we want the touch sensor to not be hit more than once with the same puck before it's destroyed by this box. So only a little sliver should be underneath this box here. Make sure to go into settings as well and go to the timing on touch, not while touched so that it doesn't register multiple goals. Then you can go ahead and copy it and put it on the other side as well. Once you have your touch sensors in place, make sure you also set it so that they are not activated by the box, but only the cylinder. Otherwise, the box it's already touching is going to activate it, and it'll constantly shoot out pucks. When this touch sensor is activated, we're going to want it to start two events. The first event is going to be to shoot out a new puck for the players to play with the next round. So we're going to grab a timer and set that for two seconds. Then we're going to hook our timer up to a launcher, 
that is launching something that's the exact same as our old puck, but on the same side where the goal was scored. So I have the timer hooked up to this guy here, the output, and the input's going to be going to the touch sensor. Every time it gets touched, it's going to launch a new one. And make sure that this one's the exact same size, a cylinder and everything else. Also make sure to make it destructible, set the launch speed for whatever you'd like it to be, and have the Z plus direction is fine. Also the color, the same color as your puck is advisable, then copy everything. Alright, let's go ahead and test it out. So when I score a goal here, the next puck should be launched. There we go, shortly thereafter. You can also make it a little bit slower or faster depending on how you want it to come out. There are many other things you can do, but there's something we need to do at least, and that is to get a counter. So we're going to need to keep track of the score in order to see who's going to win. So hook this touch sensor up to the count up function. Make sure you have it on both sides as well, so that these will count up when the goals are scored. Now we're going to connect this part to a number object. So go to objects, specials, and grab a number object. This will display the score. So we're going to put this one over here, and we're going to change the settings. So this is going to be one digit. We're going to turn everything off except for visible. And then we're going to also turn the color onto pink. So this will be the pink side score and then duplicate it for the light blue side as well. So all you have to do is change light blue. Now the important thing to note is that when the puck goes in this side, this number should go up. So you're going to need to cross these. So this one will go here and this one will attach to this counter. Uh, also, you might want to put it above your glass, especially if you have a glass top. So you can just set this up pretty high. Set it for Y equals 2, and this will put it above your glass top. I think it looks a lot better this way. Let's go ahead and check it out. Alright, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. And it's up out of the way. The scoreboard's looking good, and it's working. Now on to the next part. So right now, the game's going to go on forever. We don't have a win condition. That's what we need to set. So we're going to have a comparison note on. And we're going to start doing this the same for both sides. So we want to put our counter into the second input. And then we're going to need a constant. We need to set the score for what we want it to be for a win. I'm going to go ahead and set the constant to 7. And put this in the other side. This is going to trigger the sequence that gives us the win. So you can connect anything to this that you want to happen when the person wins the game. This is where the polish starts to come in. And you'll do the same for both sides. So the most obvious thing to do is to make a retry. So we can hook this timer up to the retry function and it's going to restart the game after five seconds as long as we go into this or however long you want it to be. And we can have some cool stuff going on during that time. So we'll hook it up just like this and of course do the same for the other side. So after they get to seven, it's going to retry after five seconds. But during that five seconds, we're going to want other stuff going on. So we're going to have to set up those other things we want. Definitely want the party popper. We're going to go into objects and we're going into special objects and then effects. Get the party popper or whatever else you want to go. And there's a really cool effect you can add as well. Uh, a really cool thing to make sure that they both don't win. We're going to go into that right after this. So everything we want to happen at that moment, we're going to hook into the equal sign. So party popper, maybe a sound effect. One more thing we need to do is make sure that both people don't win. So we want to make it so that the loser disappears. We can only do that with our destroy object node on. So let's summon up the destroy object node on just like that and we are going to connect it to the outcome equals seven so once these things are equal it's going to trigger this destroy object node on let's go into the settings and make sure that it's only set for cylinder and we're going to turn it invisible as well now we're going to need two for each side one for the little guy and one for the big guy you can make them small like this if you want as well let's make sure they're both hooked up to that and then respectively to the thing that they're going to destroy. Go ahead and make copies of these as well for the other side. Now we're going to test this out, so let's go ahead and turn this one down to one on each side. Oh, that was an intense bout, but there goes pink, and that's the end of him. So that's exactly what we want to happen. 
Now to complete the whole thing here, I made these right here, which are just basically letters because I didn't like the way the text box looked. So uh, we're putting space. I'm just going to connect one of these textures to each of these guys up here. All right, and hook these up respectively as well. And you can kind of keep them out of the way, keep them organized. All right, there we go. And then we can also add some background music. I just kind of made my own over here. All right, and just like that, we have our space hockey game all ready to go and play to seven. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and that you create your own games as well based off some of the stuff you saw in here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And I will also leave the code to this game in the comments section, as well as the description will have the full how I made it through and learned this first video. So until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful time in Game Builder Garage. Take care and God bless.